It's parents' night in. It's parents' night in. Yeah. Oh, my God. Happy May the 4th, everybody. May the 4th be with you. Me? May the 4th be with you. Oh, my. That's why it's called May the 4th, because the people that watch these movies talk like that. All of them? Right? All of them? Yes. Same freaking. Yes. Nerds! Nerds! Anyway, since it's May the 4th, we're watching some Star Wars. Which one? The most controversial Shh. Star Wars movie ever. Wait. Shh. Oh, hold on. <gasps> that noise was not pleasant. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, so this is The Last Jedi, Episode 8. This film uh, has been quite divisive. As some people would have you believe, everyone hated it. Except not really. There's still something so magical about the opening crawl yeah. of any Star Wars movie. Even the shitty ones. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I, I cannot classify myself as like a hardcore fangirl because when I was a kid, these were boy movies. Therefore, I hated them. Mm-hmm. Pretty much every boyfriend I've ever had has been obsessed with Star Wars. So, you know, I've watched it Guilty. many a time. You know, the original movies are great. Hated the prequels. Uh, fell, fell asleep. and uh, Yeah, I don't like the prequels either. But my child thinks that I'm a really cool girl because... Girls who like Star Wars are cool, and I'm one of those girls. It's true. So, if it works for him, then yes, I like Star Wars. <laughs> um, Hello, General Hux, you giant weird ginger. This is the best part. When Poe crank calls General Hux. Yeah. I'll hold. That Oscar let's just, Isaac. Yeah, let's just talk about how awesome he is. I love him. Lewin Davis is giving this ginger what for mm-hmm. over the phone. And Donald Gleason is... You know, I've seen him in a handful of things, and everything I've seen him in, he's been completely different. He's a really good yeah, actor. Yeah, he's quite a chameleon. Yeah. He's great with accents, too. Mm. He's Irish, right? His dad's Irish. Yes. So he must be. But uh, I don't think I've seen him in anything where he has an Irish accent. Not one. Every movie, he's either British or American. Mm. I um, So the thing about General Hux, I didn't like him very much in the first movie, like, performance-wise. I thought his performance was so over-the-top. Like, it is car- over-the-top. Cartoon villain. But then in this movie... They kind of tell you why. He's all bravado. He's right. all bark. Right. And He's trying to be nobody. this, oh, I'm a stern general and I'm going to command my troops. Blah. But then in this movie, like, they sort of peel all that back and it's just like he's just this insecure little shit. Yeah. Which you could kind of tell that in the first movie a you, little bit. You could a little but bit. But it's it, more so it here. It wasn't as clear that that's where they were going with it. And, and my... But I like that they... Did that in this movie. My point of talking about him being different in the all of the movies that I've seen him in is that if this was the only movie you'd seen him in, you'd be like, this guy's a terrible actor. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, like he's he seems like a really bad over actor when you watch him in this movie. Right. But like, yeah, that was like my you said, there's when, there's a reason behind that it. That was my thought when the Force Awakens actor. when the Force Awakens came out. I was like, well, he's a way better actor than this. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. But then it Really became clear in this movie. I think by the time I watched Force Awakens a couple of times, I was like, okay, I kind of get what he's going for. So I guess we should talk about what's happening in this movie. Uh, so th- it starts with a fucking killer space battle. We get to see Poe Dameron really uh, stealing the show as the ace pilot. We got to see a little of that in Force Awakens, but not Leia's as much. Leia's doing the general thing. And we get to see more of Leia and Poe's relationship where, like, he's sort of her star pupil, but he is uh, such a free spirit that she has trouble kind of reining him in a little bit. So there's a bit of tension there. She's like, dude, I love you, but stop being a a cowboy, Han. Maybe that's why she likes him so much. Yeah. He reminds her of somebody she knows. So anyway, there's a uh, big space battle. Poe is trying to single-handedly... Take down the dreadnought. Take down this dreadnought. Well, or weaken it enough for the bombers to come in. As we go along, we'll probably talk about some of the criticisms that this movie got. Toxic masculinity. And why we feel that most of the criticisms were kind of unwarranted. It's not by no means a flawless movie, but just the vehement dislike for this movie is so baffling to me. To the point that some people are actually saying that it redeemed the prequels. It's, Did I, you watch the prequels? I, due to my earlier statement and me not being an official fangirl, it's hard for my statement to have that much weight. But I definitely don't agree with that statement that they redeemed the prequels because Jesus. I mean. But also, 
I thought this was a really good movie. Like, a, a good popcorn fun movie. Yes. As far as, like, when you talk about, oh, and there are issues it's... and there are things you would like to have seen done differently, that's more of a diehard fan thing to say. But well, like, not entirely. For... I mean, there are a few things that just even a casual fan could say, okay, I, I could see how this could be done better, or whatever. Well, yeah. But they're minor, for the most part. Yes, it is a fun popcorn movie, but uh, it's got more substance than that. Yes. It's a movie about ideas. There are a lot of interesting ideas presented. Maybe a few too many ideas. It might be too ambitious for its own good in some ways. Mm. And we'll sort of go over some of these ideas as they crop up. All the bombers have been destroyed. The bombers are uh, not very efficiently designed. They're yeah, these are really not well designed. Extremely anything. slow moving and not very well armored. So the TIE fighters are able to blow most of them up quite easily. There's one bomber left and this one pilot is alone on it and trying to trigger the bombs. Later we will learn who this person is, in fact. She's not just a throwaway character. And everything hinges on this one moment because she's the only bomber left. And the remote falls just in time for her to sort of grab it out of thin air when it almost drops out of the ship. And she presses the button and the bombs fall. And therefore, she has basically sacrificed herself because there's no way she's getting out of there. Boom, 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 boom. That's a lot of bombs. Uh, so one of the criticisms leveled at this movie was right in this scene where um, there's no gravity in space. How do they drop the bombs? To which I say, there were bombs in Empire. There were bomber TIE fighters. No one had a problem with that. It's fine. Did the bombs fall? Yeah. No, oh, I don't remember There's a scene that. where they're flying over an asteroid because the... Millennium Falcon is hiding, and they're dropping bombs into the asteroid. That never even occurred to me. It's like just looking for shit to nitpick about. Like, oh, and I get yeah. it. I nitpick movies all the time. But I was gonna say you're you're not innocent. But that. that one's that one is exceedingly minor. Yeah. So they succeeded in bringing down the dreadnought, and now they're maybe they're waiting making their escape. Even if they were waited, wouldn't matter, I guess. No, no. Uh, the, or it were the theory propelled. is that there's artificial gravity on the bomber, so they're dropping within the ship, and once they get into space, inertia continues that mm. trajectory. Well, yeah, she fell. Right. All the ships have artificial gravity on them. Otherwise, right. they wouldn't be able to walk around. So, like, clearly, they can fall within the ship, and therefore they would just continue. Hux is getting his ass chewed out right now by Snoke's giant hologram face. <laughs> Supreme Leader Snoke is played, of course, by Andy Serkis, who is a monkey uh, master of motion capture thespian. He's kind of become one of my new man crushes, as it There's were. There's Finn. For his work in the Planet of the Apes films, which I dearly love. Finn has woken up from his artificial coma. He falls <laughs> out of bed. There's stuff squirting out of his suit. Why does he have stuff squirting out? Don't go there. You're gross. You're gross. Finn is naked under his plastic suit that's squirting liquids. What, uh, what was the suit doing exactly? Was it like a cryo suit? I guess. I assume it was a cryo suit. I guess. Well, uh, he was like cryogenically It was very odd that he was like com comatose for so long just because of a lightsaber injury. Okay, so now we're on um, the Jedi Temple planet that Luke has been hiding out on. Rey is about to give him his lightsaber back. This is like the most is, anticipated moment. This was the biggest cliffhanger. In all of Star Wars history. And, and a lot of people were so upset and, by what happens right and here. And whoopsie doo. He's looking at it. He's looking at her. Deep. Smell the fart acting. <laughs> and nope. I don't want it. So we should talk about that moment because that moment for a lot of people turned them off right at the beginning of this movie. And in the moment, I get that. I thought it was the wrong choice. Not that he doesn't want the lightsaber. Not that he rejects it. But that he throws it over his shoulder in that way. The take, in like a jokey way, like it, a laugh it, take. It felt like it was going for a laugh, and it shouldn't. What and I, it did, because everyone in the theater laughed. Yes, and what I would have done, it felt very out of place. And that's one of the criticisms, is there are a lot of laughs, laughs that feel out of place. And I, I agree with that, to a certain extent. What I would have done is have him stare at the lightsaber and just defeatedly drop it, and then walk away. It would have fit the tone of the scene. It would have fit his character, who is this just broken old man who feels oh, there's like... there's the toy fodder feels for like the movie. He, yeah. What are these feels, things called? Oofers? Um, porgs. I'm going to call them oofers. Luke's whole existence in this movie is based on the I'm very confused about this whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> Go on. That he, he failed. He failed at everything. 
which is also one of the theme, themes of the movie is failure. But he failed his student, he failed the resistance, he failed everything. So he's just like, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be part of this anymore. Yeah. I just want to be away from all of it. So Chewie comes and... So Chewie comes and is like, dude, Bangs down the you. door and Fuck. now Ray's trying to kind of explain to him like, we need you, there's some shit going down. Now they're in Commander Snoke's throne room, which is a pretty great set. It is a great set. I, I liked this choice of just the red curtain behind him. The The only thing that bothers me about this situation is that the red stormtrooper guard guys, whatever those are called. The Praetorian guards. The Praetorian guards. They look like Power Rangers to me, and they act like Power Rangers to me. Like, they sort of strike these poses in the battle scenes mm -hmm. before they fight. To me, that was very hokey and Power Rangery. Like, when we saw it the first time, I was like, mm. it took away from the drama to me. Snoke is not, like, I know Snoke uses holograms, and it's like sort of Wizard of oz in that sense. But this made it seem too, like, Indiana Jones, you know, the oh, opening the... scene, and they have, like, the dancing and stuff. Like, yeah. it was hokey. And grabby, and it didn't fit in. Wait until we get to that, the, the, the big battle, battle scene. scene. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would say they look like Power Rangers. Um, they look pretty Star Warsy to me. They I, don't look like Power the, Rangers. The pose, the pose thing, yeah. okay. I can see that. Not, not, it wasn't in how they were dressed. It was more how they moved. So um, Snoke is basically dressing down Kylo Ren for his failures in the first film. He lost to a girl... He even says that. He says, you lost to a girl because you didn't have your shit on straight. He sort of knocks Ren on his ass. And the guards And then the like, guards Whoosh! kind of like, Chapong! Yeah. They whip the axe around. They do a close-up of the guard. It's almost like the, the little ting at the end of the metal. <laughs> it's just silly. It would have been better if they were like, shit, do we have to jump into action? Oh, no, we're good. Right. Not like, hi-ya! Yeah. Oh, you don't need me? All right, I'm going to go stand over here until you need me. <laughs> Which pose looks better while I stand here, you guys? Should I put my hand behind my head? Or should I put my hand on my hip, you guys? Wait, wait, wait. Selfie. Oh my god, I love my new axe. I'm a Praetorian guard. You guys are dumb. Kylo Ren is so upset right now because his boss just called him out for being a fucking loser. One and, time and my... And insulted his helmet, his Darth Vader-style helmet that he was so proud of, and now he's just smashing it to bits. One time my boss was like, you know what? I would shorten that email a little bit. It's kind of long. And, and you, I went and in the other room computer. and I smashed my ski hat yeah. against the wall. Your ski hat. <laughs> <laughs> Broke my hand in a couple of places, but my ski hat was bloody. And that that so, showed him. So Kylo <laughs> called for his ship because he's going to prove to Snoke that he is the baddest motherfucker on the planet. And he's, he's way badasser than Darth Vader ever was. So they're having a lot of back and forth. Ren and... I'm sorry, Ray and... Um, Ray and Luke. Ray yeah. is trying to convince Luke to come back and because, you know, we need a Jedi. And Luke's like, the Jedi are not like the be-all, end-all of this good versus evil struggle. Like, me coming out there with a the fucking laser sword is not going to fix everything. Mm. Which is like kind of trolling the audience a little bit. Cause, yeah. Because the audience were like, Luke's going to be a badass and he's going to come out and kill everybody with his lightsaber because he's a badass. And it's like, no. I'm not the end all be all. That's not what the Jedi were really supposed to be about if you watch The Empire Strikes Back. One thing I'll say is that Mark Hamill in the other movies kind of annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> I thought he was a badass in this movie. I loved it. I, this is I his loved best, him in this, this movie. This is his best performance as Luke Skywalker. That's going to be an unpopular opinion, but yeah, I think sure. his acting is so much better in this movie but than yeah, the like, like Basically, the bad lip reading of him and Yoda is <laughs> a really good characterization of how I feel about Mark Hamill as a character most of the time. Luke Skywalker. In the, in the originals? Yeah. Well, not so much in um, kind of pitchy. Not, not so much in Return of the Jedi, because he had kind of grown up by then. But we'll yeah, have to watch that one again. In the first two, he's definitely very whiny, and he's kind of supposed to be. He's like, I know, he's I know, an he's supposed little to be. kid, but and he's clearly been very successful in the other work that he's done. He's not a bad yes, actor. Yes, he's, he's he's a great voice he's actor. An excellent Joker. Yeah. On the cartoons. But like I don't know, and I think it probably helps that his look is so perfect here. Like, yes. he's ragged and rugged yep. and worn down and, like, you know, his face is time-worn and he's, he's got just, that flowing hair. Just, it's perfect. He's just done with all of it. Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm tired. Nothing I wanted came to pass. Just fucking let me go. Mm. I'm not the answer that you're looking for. And everyone's like, that's not my Luke. That's not the Luke I wanted to see. It's like, it's okay, not my well, Luke. it makes sense in the context of the fucking story. Um, so a lot of what Luke does in this movie is just deconstruct not only expectations, but just the whole myth 
of the Jedi. Like the Jedi are always held up as these paragons of virtue that saved the galaxy over and over again and they were perfect and they were the ultimate good guys. And it's like, well, if you really watch, I mean, it actually acknowledges the prequels while at the same time kind of pointing out what was wrong with them in a lot of ways. Because mm. the Jedi were not presented as these ultimate good guys in the prequels. They did a lot of things wrong. Part of it was because they were written badly. So what are your thoughts on Rey as a character? I was actually just going to go there a minute ago, but you wouldn't shut up. And, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I love Rey as a character. I loved her in Force Awakens. Force Awakens. I was like, not only did they put a female in an antagonist role in a Star Wars movie, but they picked a really good one. Prote- sorry, protagonist. They picked a really good one. She pulls it off really well. You get behind her immediately. I don't get the Mary Sue thing. I think that's bullshit. I agree. Um, but I have to watch it again to decide if I feel as strongly about her in this movie as I do in the other ones. To me, I feel like she's a little bit of a decentralized character, probably because Luke's here. And there's just so many other things going on. I also think that I spent a lot of this movie emotionally attached to Leia because of the mm, fact that yes, we lost that her. Carrie Fisher died. Before this came out. And she's a pretty cool chick. Like, as a human being. And this is one of those things that is a chief complaint of a lot of the men in the world, which are mostly Star Wars fans, men, right? But... I mean, I think uh, that's less true than it was 30 years ago. For sure. But I love the strong female themes in this movie. Like, I love all the strong females that are in it. I love that Leia is a general, and not only is she a general, but she's, like, the reason why they're successful. She's... The driving force. Everyone looks towards her. Right. And she's not a bitch. And she's not, you know, she doesn't fall into a lot of those typical traps that they write for women. So many of the complaints about having strong female characters are just so pitiful to me. We're in an interesting time like, in the world. Why is this a problem? There, How many fucking movies have there been that are all strong male characters and the women just right. sort of sit there and do nothing? But I, like not to get political, and the, the, I'm, not, no. I'm not turning this into a political thing. We live in an interesting time in the world where women are having a moment and the people who are, have the biggest problem with this are rallying so hard against it. Yes. And same thing with people of color and, and other marginalized groups. Like... So many groups are having a moment, and the people who feel like they have something to lose from it, which is bullshit. throwing tantrums over it. Yeah, Yeah. so it's it's turning into this extremely polarized thing that doesn't need to be there. Like, no. Some awesome stuff happening in this movie. So what if they have boobs? (laughs) Boobs are pretty awesome. I like my action heroes to have a penis. (laughs) So I want them to look and sound just like me. So Kylo uh, is trying to prove himself to Snoke by killing as many of the Resistance people as he can. With his hopefully, own hand. Hopefully his mother. He's trying to, he wants to kill his mother. That's not nice. It's not nice, but he killed his dad already. Yeah. So Snoke's like, yeah, you should finish the job, you pussy. Well, yeah, so at this point, his, you know, his desire to be seen as strong by his boss is more of a driving force than, you know, it, and it's decent m- humanity. Manifesting itself <laughs> in... I'm going to destroy shit because... Namely, my family. Destruction is somehow seen as a strength. Here he is. They're they're sort of connected via the force, and he has his finger on the button, and And he can't do it. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. And some other ships, you know, they jump in there, and they do it. And she's like, oh, shit. She knows it's coming, and she gets sucked out the window. Now, I had a problem with this the first time I saw it. Um, Not that she gets sucked out the window, but... Once she's out there, she just kind of puts her arm out and floats back in. And I get that she's like, has some force and stuff. The problem I have with it is that visually and how it happens and sort of the whole package to me doesn't fit with the rest of the movies. Like I've never seen anything look like that in these movies before. Do you know what I mean? From a filmmaking visual standpoint, it doesn't fit. It's very CG enhanced. Yeah, I, th- I don't think it's the CG problem. I don't think it problem. looks any more glaring than some of the shit in the prequels that didn't well, look see, like I don't, the Well, see, I can't count the prequels because I, you know, I don't, they all blend. I, I didn't really have a problem with this moment. Yeah, we ta- well, we talked about it. So on the way home from the theater, like I mean, it, the, it, I had a few main problems, nitpicky problems, yeah. and this was one of them. It, you know, she's sort of out there, and I was like, wow, 
you know, when I first saw it, I was like, well, this is, you know, she died and they didn't get enough footage. And so this is what they're going to do. And then when she floats back in, I'm like, oh, interesting. This floating back in thing is like, she's too stiff. Well, she's out in space. I There's know. There's no air. No, I understand that. How would you have done it differently? How'd she breathe? She didn't. I mean, you know, the moment takes probably longer than realistically it could. But again, it's in a movie with laser swords and wizards. And... Yeah, I know. I know. That's the other thing that, that makes me laugh when people nitpick this shit. It's like, guys. It's a fantasy hey, film. Hey, guys. <laughs> guys. There's no such thing as a Wookiee. Chewbacca, in, yeah. In your words. I was words. just going to say, Chewbacca <laughs> doesn't exist. And no, I like to a certain extent, I get nitpicking physics and stuff like that. But but you're nitpicking physics in a movie about a Wookiee and, and lightsabers. Uh, yes. I mean, there's obviously going to be physical laws that are similar to what we have here. So, like, I get that. But at a certain point, it's like, all right, you're overboard with the nitpicking. And now Chewbacca's trying to eat a prati. A porg. <laughs> prati. <laughs> I'm just going to change The devil her. eats Prada. <laughs> yeah, and the porgy's looking at him and he's like, don't eat my friend. And then Chewie yells the at him. The porgs are so cute. And then the snorg flies away. <laughs> and Chewbacca's like, shit, now I the can't snorks? eat this. Oh my god, I loved the snorts. Oh, I hated that show. This woman's nose is huge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, mean. <laughs> well, no, there's there's a profile shot of her in one of the earlier scenes. And it's like, whoa! <laughs> I don't think it's a prosthetic. It's not a prosthetic. <laughs> That's her actual nose. Hey, lady. <laughs> Why do you have a tank for your nose? <laughs> Kelly, this is Rita. Jesus, Rita! <laughs> Why is her name Rita? I don't know. <laughs> Laura Dern? Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. She's gorgeous in this movie. The purple hair is amazing. It's a weird touch, the purple hair, but... <laughs> I like it. So Laura Dern My only in... problem with Laura Dern's uh, character is why is she dressed in an evening gown? She's a military admiral. Why is she dressed like that? I think she looks awesome. Was she like on her way to a banquet and they were like, uh, Holdo, we need you. <laughs> She's no. like, can I change first? No, right now. <laughs> no, I Get think... Get on the fucking ship. I think it's just... This is just her peoples. You know, when you watch... Granted... Her peoples? I'm, I'm going back to the pre... The, I was the, trying to say prequels and you say peoples and I was going to say oh. prequels. Um, when I go back... That, those are the characters in the prequels. They're called the prequels. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> when you look at the prequels, yep. not that we want to use these to judge anything. Well, yeah, I mean... When like, you look at the prequels, Amidala like, is always wearing ridiculous outfits. Yeah, but even her aside... She was a queen. Her yeah. aside, everyone had very distinct looks. Yeah. And so, yes, in these scenes, most of them are like soldiers and they're just dressed like soldiers and whatever. Obviously, she stands out, but... I feel like she just, wouldn't she realistically gorge. dress like that, though, in this eh, situation. They're whatever. at war. They're in the middle of a fucking giant battle. Justin, maybe that's what her hair looks like and, all the time. And, she woke up like this. And Poe's like, will you be having wine with your torpedoes? So okay. She's, uh, she's, Can we, wait. She's, she's giving Poe some shit. She's giving Poe shit. Poe's like, tell me the plan. And she's like, F you, you're no one. So in the very first scene, obviously this was done on and purpose. this scene got the men so pissed off. Sorry. Yes. This scene pisses off the men. I get it. It, it, and I can see why she comes in and she's she does play the bitch like she does the things that Leia doesn't do yeah where she's like I'm in charge now bitch you can't do anything to me <laughs> <laughs> she does not at all sound like that by no. the way but um she kind of comes in and she seems a little bit cocky and power trippy and you condescending know, condescending but she Above but honestly all. think about this for a second if she were a man would you say those things no well you'd say she was condescending all right, you, all right. No, if she were a man, you would say those things. The difference is all the people complaining about that scene would not have a problem with it. If it was a man, yeah. Exactly. Um, but anyway, like, wow, so, he's kind of a dick. But so like, that's it. I'm watching her and here I am thinking like she's going to be the downfall of this group. Like yes. she's there. She's going to fuck them over or yep. she's going to be a traitor or something. Remember that point because, again, another one of the complaints was the women in this movie are never wrong. Huh? So just watch. That was one of the complaints I've seen. Really? I've never all seen All the that. female characters are always right. Nah, all the men are dumb. And nah. These guys clearly never get laid. Uh -huh. You know why? Because they would know the woman is always right. Uh -huh. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now we... No, no, no. Let me... Look, can I do it? What? You're going to talk about Rose. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sometimes I help Justin out and I post things in these other groups for him. And so these things come up on my newsfeed when I'm on the train and reading Facebook. 
and I get sucked into these comment sections and I literally just want to comment, do any of you get laid by <laughs> girls at all? Because all they do is go, yeah, Rose, oh, she's such a bitch and this one's a bitch and that one's a bitch. But they, they spend so much time just skewering Rose. Yep. Now, is she awesome? No. No. Is she the worst thing in the movie? No. No. She's okay. It is a weird side sweep. Like, they sort of go yeah. off on the side adventure that doesn't really get them anywhere. But, like, the hate for Rose it's is out of incredible. Control. D- dude, there are people saying that she's worse than Jar Jar. Yeah, no. Fuck off. She never said Misa. <laughs> so, she automatically said, she wins. Hey, Finn, you said Tinkin, you said people gonna die? Also, she doesn't say, excuse me. <laughs> um, she's smart. Yes. She actually knows things. Right. She's driven. Yeah, but again, if she were a male character, people wouldn't have a problem with the fact that she's smart and knows things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's... I don't I don't love her character, I think. I don't want to say shoehorned. She felt just a little bit out of place for me. I agree with that to a point. She sort of doesn't feel like a Star Wars character. <laughs> yeah. She also introduces a weird triangle that I don't know how they're going to reconcile, which is the, the love triangle yes. between... And it's not and that, love, but it's like this interest, this romantic interest between... And that felt forced to me. Yeah. P- uh, Finn and Ray and now Rose, and Rose comes into this and yes. drives a wedge and whatever. And Rose, by the way, is the sister of the bomber pilot that we saw right. sacrifice so, herself So earlier. when we meet her, she's crying and holding the other half of this pendant. Yes. And we find out that she's like, you know, the last thing she wants is a traitor and her sister died for these guys. And so she thinks that Finn's taking off, which he kind of is. Well, he's taking off, but he's taking off to warn Ray to stay away. Because right. her plan is to come back and join the resistance. And he's like, that's a fucking death trap. Don't do it. What are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking Rolling Rock. Whoa. My, the, my old standby from when I first started drinking beer. It was my house beer. Yeah. This is not your first beer of the night, though. What else have you had tonight? I've had a, well, what you're drinking, Jack's Abbey House Lager. Yeah, I'm drinking a Jack's Abbey House Lager. From this is like right my here favorite. in Framingham. We're not in Framingham, but Framingham, Massachusetts. Framingham. I like saying Framingham. This scene um, kind of bugged me. What, that they put Maz in there that just they to have sh- her in there? They had to stick Maz in here and it doesn't really make sense. Like, she's in the middle of a laser fight and... She's like, yeah, and they like, she's they're trying like, to hey, give them advice. do you have a second? They yeah. like FaceTime her. She's like, her, no. And I... she answers. Yeah, she should have been like, like uh, no. But if you're, if you're in the middle of a laser battle and someone tries to FaceTime you, you decline. Yeah. Also, Maz never met Poe in the first movie, but he's the one who thinks to call her. She met Finn and she met Ray, but she never met Poe. Well, I mean, things have happened in between. Maybe not they much, made, though. Like, maybe they made friends. Time. They probably made friends. I mean, maybe. They made friends. Um, I think they made friends. I guess Leia must have known her, so maybe Leia introduced them at some point over well, FaceTime. Yeah. Leia was like, you you ever need to know something, you, know what? you call this bitch, because she's a thousand years old and she will tell you everything, and then she'll take I off know. her glasses and she has eyes like buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes look like buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of FaceTime. Yeah. This is where Ray and Kylo Ren force Skype. <laughs> force Skype. That's what people are calling it. She tries to shoot him. Like force Skype. She tries to shoot him because she can see him, but he's not really there. So she just shot a hole in Luke's hut. It's like telepresence. And Kylo's like, what the, f- how, how is this happening? What is going on? This stuff is, for me, the best part of the movie. I agree. It, it sets up a lot of really I love this really relationship. Great... I love the fact that these are basically two halves of the protagonists in, right. in this trilogy. Well, Even though Kylo is presented as the villain originally. It sets up some really great tension between them. Yes. And I have no idea where it's going. And I, that's exciting to me. Well, i got to tell you, the other thing that I see in these nerd groups are people that ship Raylo. And let me millennial that down for you. Ship? Yes. When you ship somebody, this is going to make me sound old because maybe it's really like not even in anymore. <laughs> but they say, I ship Raylo as in worship. Oh. <laughs> or, or I think the newer way to say it is I stan Raylo. Stan? Yes. What is that short for? It is not short for anything. It is a reference to the Eminem song, Stan. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. And that's a fucking old reference. That song came out like almost 20 years ago. I know, but the but the millennials stand. Jesus. The millennials weren't even born. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of like, F Finn, you know, Ray and, and Kylo Ren should like get together and do it. And there, you know, there's like, I th- I'm pretty sure there's fan fiction. I'm sure there is. With yeah. like, where they fuck. Probably. Yeah. Um, I prefer the term make love. I prefer the term make love. Oh, fuck. I'm screwing this for carpenters, Billy. <laughs> that's, my, that's my Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez finally made it to Parents Night In. <laughs> so Luke is showing her some Force stuff because that he was like, you know what, I'm not going to come with you, but I will teach you some things. When you said that. Because you don't understand it what's happening. sounded dirty. He's showing her some Force stuff. Oh, I'm not going to go with you, but I'll teach you some butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so now Jesus. she's sitting on a rock and she's meditating. He's like, reach out. And she's like literally reaching out with her hand. Don't be stupid, Ray. So the Mary Sue argument comes from the fact that she's inexplicably very strong with the Force. To the point that people complain that like she's too powerful and like she never really gets into that much trouble. I actually saw this one. Someone said she should have like lost a hand or something. Oh, just like Empire Strikes Back? Like do you want the entire original trilogy to just be recycled? Well, wasn't the complaint about The Force Awakens that it was, it was too a recycled much like movie a new plot? Hope. Yes. And then Why this one did things, things differently. Why? Because uh... oh, you look at stupid Facebook groups. So, um... Well, and you tell me these things. But wait, one thing I will say is that when we watched this scene, I was like, she got it on the first try. Got what? The, like, she was able to kind of connect. Like, well, he was like, okay, try to reach out spiritually. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she does it, and she immediately connects. It's sort of, to me, like... Hey, kid, I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike without training wheels. And then they're like, no, no, it's cool. I got it. Yeah, except, I mean, she's a prodigy. I know. And that's how prodigies are. I mean, and I use this example all the time when I'm arguing with stupid people. <laughs> um, Mozart. Mozart yeah. was writing music at five. True. Like, some people just have it. They have a, they're born with this skill. They don't know why. They don't know why it's just there, but it is. And all they need is guidance to channel it and that's what she is she's a prodigy she still doesn't understand it she doesn't understand no and it scares the shit out of him it's and her like it's terrifying to both of them like it was scary to her in the first movie she touched the lightsaber and she felt something and she was like what the fuck was that like i don't want this yeah and luke says this is very similar to what i saw with kylo ren and it scared me but it didn't scare me enough and now i'm terrified and i'm not gonna i don't want anything to do with this Because we all know how that turned out. Mm. I don't want to make another Kylo Ren. But um, just the fact that a character is innately skilled at something does not mean that they are, like, perfect. Like, she's still scared, and she needs someone to sort of show her the path, you know? And that's why she gets drawn closer to Kylo Ren, because he's, like, sort of offering her that. Oh, she's about to have another Skype moment. (laughs) Incoming call from... Kylo Ren. She's pissed at him still because he fucking killed Han Solo. His voice is so, um, like, I don't find him sexy in any way, shape, or form. I don't think he's attractive. My mom does. Yeah, that's a whole thing. <laughs> she really likes him. Mm. Um, but, like, he's a weird-looking dude. Mm. But he's got a very sexy voice. Oh. Especially when he goes, outer space. Yeah. Outer space. Another movie that he shares with our friend Oscar. Yeah. They it's were a bo- great movie. They were both inside Lewin Davis. Ew. Oh, Jesus. So, um, so what's, well, what's interesting, too, about Rose, the Rose thing for a second, because we're getting into another Rose section, yes. is that, you know, the, the fanboys were so harsh on her that Mark Hamill came to her rescue on Twitter. Oh, did he? Yeah. He was like, dudes, chill the fuck out. She was doing her job. Right. And it's not a terrible character. And by the way, she's awesome. Yeah. And by the way, in real life, she's a fucking smoke show. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Holy Jesus. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Her hair is so stupid in this movie, though. Yeah, it looks bad. And that's another thing. Like, I her... wonder if they made her hair better if people would have liked her more. Probably. I know that's a weird thing to say, but that is a thing. Her hairstyle looks very out of place. Mm. No, movie. it didn't bother me that it looked out of place. I just feel like it's just goofy. Yeah. Uh, so this is the weakest part of the movie. Um, the Canto Bite casino stuff. It feels very prequel-ish. 
Mm. Everything is too clean, and and I get that that's part of the point. Is it's this pristine? Well, it's just, yeah, it's like a. But it, it all just, rich people. It and... has just the look of the sets and stuff look very prequelish. Even though there were there were a lot of practical effects in these scenes, and a lot of the makeup and stuff was real, it doesn't feel that Star Warsy. Yeah. It's kind of this movie's equivalent of the Rathtar scene in Force Awakens, which also didn't feel Star Warsy. To yeah. Me. This segment is also considered by a lot of people to be pointless which I get to a certain extent because their whole objective is to find this code breaker who is going to help them sneak aboard the giant Star Destroyer and turn off the tracking system. And it doesn't work. It's a big old mess of a failure. However... Yeah, it like doesn't really advance the plot. Well, it does, as we'll see. It advances the plot in a, an unexpected way. And it also, also gives them an opportunity to be preachy. <laughs> yes. Or as the complainers are calling it, social justice warrior, SJW. Have you seen that? Mm, That's yeah, all probably. of it. It's fucking SJW movie. <laughs> it is a little bit preachy. Not only do I not want girls to be powerful, but kill the animals. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is preachy and a little bit heavy handed. Yeah. So like I agree with that, but it's a little bit like an Avatar Wally kind yeah, of thing. A little bit. But there are some bigger themes at play in this Correct. sequence. So here's Ray training against a rock. And she's like, fuck this magic. I want a lightsaber. It's F this magic. It Sorry. doesn't sound as good when you say the whole word. <laughs> it doesn't sound good <laughs> anyway. Because it doesn't make sense. F this magic makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> are you from New Jersey? Mm-hmm. In 1932. Okay. Hey, you guys want to play stick ball? <laughs> If this magic. <laughs> if this magic. I don't think they said that in 1932. We, we lost last time. Because <laughs> Jimmy the Shovel fucked this up. Jimmy the Shovel? I don't know. What the hell is that? I don't know. Jimmy the Shovel. <laughs> these she, little, she these knocked little over the rock by mistake. Turtle hippo fish things. They kind of look like a turtle hippo fish. <laughs> they, they do not like Ray. She keeps fucking up their island. Yeah. So here's where Luke is talking about how the Jedi were not all they were cracked up to be, mythically. Like, they fucked up. They were they were full of themselves. They thought they had all the answers. They didn't have shit. Which, if you watch the prequels, they really didn't have shit. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing the entire time. Their enemy was right in front of them the whole time. None of them fucking spotted it. Even Anakin had to be told. Oh, I'm the Sith Lord. Wait, what? It's me? <laughs> No, he had, to, like, Palpatine is like, oh, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm the guy that you've been looking for this whole time. Don't you feel <laughs> stupid now? And Anakin's like... <laughs> that's what he said. That was his line. I don't probably. actually remember that line. I, apparently that was when I, I went know. to get more popcorn. <laughs> Have this magic. I need popcorn. <laughs> hey, Jimmy the Shovel. <laughs> Will you give me some popcorns? And she's like, I just... So Ren, you know, realizes... I, I just... Ray... Jesus Christ. Their names are too similar. Yeah. Ray realizes that she doesn't understand what's happening to her. She knows that she's strong. She knows that she has it. She needs someone to show her where you, she fits in how and to how use to use it. it. Yes. Which, again, contradicts the idea that she's this perfect character. Well, yeah, she's like, not at all like, I got this. She's No, she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, please help me. So Finn and Rose have been taken prisoner on the casino planet because they were trespassing. Because they parked on the beach. Stupid. The rich guys were like, no, they parked in my fancy Shell beach. Shell out the 17,000 Republic credits for the parking spot, for Christ's sakes. Who's, who's this guy? Benicio Del Toro. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like this character. I don't like that they gave him this goofy stutter thing. Where he's like, bip, 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 bip. No, it didn't bother me. I thought it was it's, cool. It's goofy. Made him quirky goofy he doesn't need it he's quirky enough as it is to me it made him seem less threatening but why did he need to be less threatening um he has some cool little bits of dialogue that i like and that make this part of the movie have a bit more purpose thematically these animals are cute they are the, the giant dog rabbits rabbit dogs they just let them all go they let all the rabbit dogs go now the rabbit dogs are <laughs> rabbit dogs this scene 
was originally way longer in the deleted scenes. There's a much longer cut of the scene, and thank Christ that they cut it down. What was what else happened? Just more chasing and more crashing through stuff, and it's it's like a 15 minute sequence. Like when King Kong fought the dinosaurs. Oh God, that movie fucking sucks. The King Kong remake, 2005, directed by Peter Jackson. Awful. It's basically a giant three hour Warner Brothers cartoon. <laughs> Andy Serkis isn't that though. He was King Kong. I'm sorry, Andy, but you know, I, you know I hated that movie. You were good. You though. know what, Andy? Give someone else a chance, okay? <laughs> Stop being so good at everything. Fuck. Jesus. Why are you going to be so good? Jimmy the Shovel's out of work. He could use the acting. <laughs> Jesus. Jimmy the Shovel auditioned for that part. You know what they said? <laughs> we're giving it to Andy. You went way Boston <laughs> suddenly. He's no longer New Jersey. James the Shovel auditioned for that part. <laughs> yeah? Crikey. <laughs> I think James the Shovel was so excited that he blew the part. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, they almost if rolled I off a cliff. If I were James the Shovel, I would also audition for that well, part. we're back to that. <laughs> oh, boy, James the Shovel. James, James the Shovel was a Mashugana. <laughs> I wouldn't have hired him for any film production. L little JJ the Shovel. He is what you would call not a team player. And his brother, Patrick the Pickaxe. <laughs> his brother, Patrick the Shovel. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason for that to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get back on the clock. <laughs> Kelly's gone bye bye. Justin will take you through the next half hour of the movie while I collect myself. <laughs> Luke is reaching out and he can feel Leia. He can feel that Leia is infirm and Leia can feel Luke's presence through the Force. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that last one? <sighs> I'm, I'm going to put my new, very cold beer into my Enoughadotcom koozie. I have an Enoughadotcom koozie too. It does not fit your beer can though. Well, Ooh, it's wait, enough. wait. It's Kylo Ren with pants up to his boobies. <laughs> He's wearing old school pants. She's like, would you put a shirt on? He's like, no. Would you put a shirt on? Because I really can't concentrate with your super sexy pecs. Look at my man tits. <laughs> They're scarred, so he's, you know they're manly. <laughs> he's pretty cut. He is cut. She's like, why, why did you kill him? Why did you do it? And he's like, you know why? Because I need... Because your parents suck. That was a weird no. response. He said your parents threw you away like garbage. Well, yeah. No, but that's not why he killed Han Solo. He's saying... I know, but she said, why did you kill them? And his response was, your parents threw you away like garbage. Because yeah. he's gaslighting her, you see. He is gaslighting her. He does that uh, multiple times in this movie, actually. Well, you know. He's a dick. And now he's telling her that Luke was going to kill him. And Luke's like, oh, I'm going to fucking stab you. But um, Kylo's saying, you know, he was going to kill me and I was just defending myself. But it's like, why did you burn down the entire planet? Because he has what we like to call Jesus. temper issues. That might be an overreaction there, Ben. Even if he was actively trying to he kill you. He has a problem controlling his temper. So now Ray's like, you know what? I need to see what's in this fucking... It looks like a seaweed butthole. <laughs> That's the second time that... What's with you in buttholes? I don't know. The seaweed butthole. That's what it looks like. And then Ray fell into the seaweed butthole. <laughs> if a giant <laughs> seaweed creature had a butthole, that's what it would look like. Wow. If Maz's face had seaweed coming out of it... <laughs> oh my God, how did I get inside one of Maz's eyes? <laughs> So she is in front of a weird uh, ice mirror looking this thing. This thing kind of, this this scene and was like sort of cool, but felt out of place to me. And there's millions of her. It's like a crazy reflection thing. Did it feel out of place to you? Do you agree with me on this? Like right I here. I wouldn't say it felt out of place. It's like, I don't think it's meant to be sort of taken literally exactly. You know what it reminds me of? Like. It's like this is her perception of it. You, you've never actually watched that much Spongebob, but it's like when you're watching Spongebob. And then Spongebob goes 3D and like turns mm. real. It's like that to me. You know what's cool about the scene is the way they shot it. They had a ton of different cameras lined up. 
so that they caught her doing one motion, but all from separate sort of points of view. So it was like a legit copy, copy, copy. So now she's telling Kylo about what she saw. Um, the mirror is supposed to show her who her parents are. She just wants to know, she wants to know where she comes from. She wants to know what her purpose is. She thinks that the past will give her answers. But all she sees is... Jimmy the Shovel. Jimmy the Shovel. Hey, Ray, what are you doing here? <laughs> I thought you left Jersey years ago. <laughs> all she sees is herself. Symbolism. Mm -hmm. She was looking for the answers to, to her place in the universe, and all she sees is herself. She's her, alone. Well, not only that, her answers are within her. Right. She is what she's been looking for. She needs to forge her own path. This is like the moment when that guy that you hate from college is hanging out with you and everyone else has gone home and you've been drinking for a few hours and like he looks into your soul and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to marry this guy. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So he looks into your soul and says, I wrote a poem about you. <laughs> it's got 12 stanzas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read them all to you right now. When was the last time you used the word stanza, by the way? Uh, seventh grade, maybe. Wow, your high school sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke's like, no. Oh. So Luke comes in and he can see them. So strong is he with the force. Then he blows up the dome. Stone dome. Those uh, cow penguin people that you, what, what, what was it? <laughs> Hippo penguin fish. Hippo penguin fish. They're going to be fucking pissed at Luke now. <laughs> like all she did was blow a hole through it. He destroyed the entire hut. With the blink of an eye. This was another scene that got people's underoos in a bind. <laughs> underoos. She kicks Luke's ass. She kicks his ass in this fight. She wouldn't Dude, be able to... he's been sitting on an island for 30 years. And she, like, momentarily gets an advantage because she has a lightsaber and he's got a stick. It's not like they were fighting to the death. She's like, you, you didn't tell me the whole story, you lying old sack of shit. Did you say lying older sack of shit? Was that like a sort of undermining insult? <laughs> uh, I didn't, but I'm, that's the story I'm going with now. You that's... lying older sack of shit. <laughs> not, not you old as shit piece of shit fucker. It's, it's <laughs> you lying slightly older than me piece of poop. <laughs> you lying mature adult. <laughs> and this is why Luke is the way he is here because he's like Jesus Christ I was gonna fucking kill my nephew just for a second he just had that thought for a second and then he was so ashamed of it so so Ray's looking at it they're looking at the same situation from very different angles because she's looking at it like there's still time to save him right and and, and Luke's like, like yeah that ship has sailed dude right. Luke is very aware that this is not gonna go well yes and Ray's like yeah no I got this well, she's not. She's like... I'm Boo Boo she, Jenkins. She's not even saying, I got this. She's saying, no, we have a chance here. Can you fucking help me, please? He's like, <clears throat> it's not, it's not going to work. He's fucked. He's fucked, and so are you. <gasps> it's Yoda. What's cool about this is they actually built a new Yoda puppet. It didn't quite capture the look of the original one, but it's not bad either. Ghosts aren't supposed to look exactly it's the like, same I'm as gonna in I'm going to burn down life. this fucking tree because it's got the stupid books in it. And Yoda's like, no, you pussy. All right. Yoda's I'm like, I'm going to do it for you. Mm, I get a fart. People had a problem with that, too. Oh, ghost Yoda can harness lightning? Yes. Like, he's a fucking Jedi ghost. He's, he's a ghost. Who cares? Did he harness himself back to the island? Yeah. Yes. I can get to the island, but that's it. I'm done. <laughs> I got all the way to the island, but now <laughs> I am spent. Could someone get me some lightning? I have arrived. Now, can somebody call Jimmy the shovel to do the rest of my work? Could someone find some gasoline and pour it on the tree and please take a flare and light it because I am spent. I think there are matches in my pocket. I can't even possibly lift my arm to get them. I am trying to make an emotional point to my young apprentice, but I am too spent to do it and I am just a ghost and I cannot affect worldly <laughs> change. And I need someone to please take the tree and light it on fucking fire. I am sorry to use harsh language, but that is the kind of day I have had. A good story there. <laughs> you know, maybe I should have just stayed behind and said the lightning. 
It occurs to me I could have just uploaded the lightning to the cloud and had it downloaded automatically into the tree. Instead of coming all this way. That is a mistake I will and not boy, repeat. boy, my arms tired. <laughs> Perhaps if my apprentice, 60 years old though he is, were not such a pussy, he would have lit the tree on fire himself and I would not need to ask someone's help to do it now. I need someone's help on account of I didn't think he was going to actually wimp out. I thought I could double dog dare him into lighting the goddamn tree. Again, I'm not proud of my language, but it's been a day. Oh, Rose is back. Hi, Rose. So here is the thematic stuff that the Del Toro character presents. They were talking about like good, good versus evil. And he's like, good guys and bad guys, this, these are nonsense words. They're guys. Like, guys and guys. All the people on Canto Bight made their fortunes by selling armaments to both sides of this conflict. There's no good guys and bad guys anymore. It's all bullshit. And, you know, well, that's not entirely true. It raises an interesting point. And it's a point that uh, Kylo Ren kind of echoes later when he's like, the resistance in the First Order, like, maybe they're both wrong. Maybe this two-party system or whatever has outlived its usefulness. Maybe we should just tear it all down and build something new. Something center in a two-party system. <laughs> That's my Hamilton. <laughs> Dem and em a sem and in a two-party system. I forget the words to that part. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so now, po Poldo is... and Poe. Poldo. If we, if, if, you, if, if, if we will, if you will. What? <laughs> if, 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 you, if, if. Poldo are having it out right now. Yeah, Poe is uh, calling Holdo out because he's like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Because she's not telling him anything. And then he just discovers that she's been fueling up the escape transports. And Poe is like, you're just basically surrendering at this point. Those are unarmed. And this is where you think maybe Holdo is selling out or something. The power you know, struggle. It's, and it's the typical, like, in, in every movie where you have a person who you're not sure if they're good, and then they flip to the bad side. It's like the second they get called out, it's like, arrest this man. Yes. And then they get to do all their and bad stuff. So immediately you're like, oh, right. shit, it's, like, it's oh, going down. Oh, no. Kind of a double bluff. I liked that approach. Yes. So he's, uh, he's, he's telling Holdo his whole side plan. So, one, again, one of the complaints was why didn't Holdo just tell Poe her plan from the beginning? And because she's the fucking chief, yes, man. Right, right. It's, it's, she, she doesn't was, have to. Right. Whether it's correct or not, she doesn't have to. And um, during World War II, Churchill had some kind of secret plan he didn't even tell his like highest officers about. Because and if they, you don't know if you can trust people, you don't tell them right. the plan. So he didn't tell them, and then they went and did the side plan. It was disastrous, and it ended up costing a lot of lives. And it was like, if he had just told them, then none of that would have happened. But at the same Fair. Time, at the same time, it's like, you know. But, like, why did He didn't know you were going to go on this fucking risky side mission. Right. Maybe just have faith in the guy in charge, dicks. Right. I shouldn't use that word. That was a strong word. <laughs> Maybe trust the guy so then, in charge, poopers so then when he tells her what his side plan is she's like a dickhead so he uh, uh kylo is taking ray up to see emperor here comes Palpasoke. the kiss here comes the kiss they're not gonna kiss she's like i saw that you're gonna turn good I, I can see it i saw your future when we touched and he's like i saw something too i saw your boobs oh my god wait what he didn't say that so they're both trying to say, you're going to come with me, and you're going to turn. No, no you're, you're going to come with me. No, you're going to turn. No, you are. No, you are. You are. You. Are. You. you. Then there's going to be a you pillow fight, first. and then they're going to make out. You turn first. Oh, wait. You turn first. Now they're in the red room. Here we go. So this scene is... Power Ranger time. This scene is kind of right out of Return of the it's Jedi. It's morphin' time! <laughs> oh, God. This is right out of Return of the Jedi, um, down to some of the dialogue. However, the outcome is a little bit different. There's Rita. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rita, I smell a rat, and I'll bet you do too. Look at the size of that schnoz. Do you, do you smell something? <laughs> I no, see- I really want to know. Like, can you smell things with that? <laughs> like, seriously, can you smell everything? <laughs> I farted like three weeks ago. Can you still smell it? Poor Rita. <laughs> <laughs> She's so nice. No one should talk about her like that. Oh, God. Oh, Auntie. there's like evil BB-8. Bizarro BB-8. <laughs> BB douche. <laughs> is that what his name is? We'll call him FF8. Wait, wait. BB hate. 
Huh? Yeah. Huh? Up top. Woo! BB8. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a reason I married you. Uh, for bad puns. Wit. This is a tearful goodbye scene. No. Old Dusty in there. There she is. Oh my god. I told you. It's like an anteater sat on her face. <laughs> It's like an elephant and a person mated. <laughs> I love Ray because as she's being like force dragged over to uh, to Snoop, she's uh, Snoop. <laughs> Snoopy. <laughs> she's she's like, nah, you don't scare me. She's well, like, I mean, nah, she's, you know what? She she grew up in a very harsh environment. She's not True. really scared of stuff. Yeah. Except for like, you can the, always tell when she's, she's shaken on the inside. She's just yes, not yes. letting it show. She's scared of the bigger stuff, like. What if none of this means anything? What am I doing? What if my mom and dad never come back? Right. You can tell that she's run into her share of Scuffles. jerky jerky guys in an alley. Yeah. She's like, yeah, you don't scare me. She's really good at portraying the torture. Yes. No, she's uh, she's wonderful at emoting mm. Daisy Ridley. Mm. And uh, she basically had no acting experience before these movies. Yeah, she was like a waitress. It's ridiculous. Some would say... She's a Mary Sue actor. Yeah. What a fucking Mary Sue Daisy Ridley is in real life. And then some guy just walks into a restaurant and is like, hey, that hey. waitress looks like my main character. I'm going to have her audition. And then no, she's, she's the best famous. actress in the world. No, she's what awesome. the fuck? What the fuck? That doesn't happen. She didn't earn that. She didn't spend 19 years losing hands in auditions. Losing hands? <laughs> <laughs> she still has two hands. She can't be an actor. She can't be a Star Wars hero. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's why they don't get laid. That noise is horrible. Yeah, it is. Oh my God, I can't believe I can get to see boobies. Bleh! You know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm going home. You blew it. You blew it, Captain. You know what? I'm going to pay for dinner because Jesus. <laughs> she paid for dinner. What an SJW. Bleh! Oh my god, she's wearing pants. <laughs> what is this, the 60s? She's wearing pants. What a feminazi thing to do. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, Del Toro sold them out. So that's the other point of the Canto Bite side plot. He not only sells these two out, but he also he gives them their like the intel about the resistance transports. Right. So they can follow them. So he's like, I spotted something here. Want this information? They're escaping. So Canto Bite has thematic elements, you know, good, evil, these terms really don't apply anymore. And, you know, don't trust some guy you met in jail, you dumb asses. And uh, the theme of failure, which is prevalent throughout this movie. There's, there's That's lots true. lots of failures. But not from Ray. <laughs> Everyone fails but Ray. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so, yeah, the thing about... Uh, the people complaining that all the women are right. It's like, Holdo is kind of proven wrong in not telling Poe the plan because Poe then does this other thing that fucks everything up. But, like, she should have just told him. So, like, she's sort of proven wrong in that way. So, like, no, the women characters are not always right. You cry babies. So this part's right out of Return of the Jedi where it's like, look, your people are all getting fucking slaughtered. Look at it. And then she steals Kylo Ren's lightsaber. There they are. There's the Power Rangers. Yeah, the poses are a little silly. She's Maybe that's the thing. They're like, he can totally take care of himself, so we should I'm just going to totally, stand here and look cool. We should just like work on our poses, <laughs> you guys. I like it when I hold my spear at like a 45, maybe like a 48 degree angle. 45 is so 2010. No, I'm holding it at 48. You need to do something else. 49? Okay. All right. Also, <laughs> I'm going to slightly pop my hip. You can't pop your hip. I'm popping my hip. I'm going to pretend that my hand is a mirror and I'm looking at myself. <laughs> See? I'm so gonna... now, so this is, this is a great moment. It's, yes. it's, it's incredible tension. So, you know, Ray and Ren are staring at each other. And, you know, he's sort of like, yeah, I'm going to kill Ray. But in reality... He's the same slowly time, using he's... the force to turn the lightsaber and he's going to kill his boss. Snake. <laughs> Snape? Yeah. Professor Snape? Cuts him right in half. So that was another complaint, is that we never really got to find out Snoke's backstory before he was killed off. 
you don't have to know everyone's backstory. No. Um, and, I, you know, originally, like the first time I saw it, I was like, well, really? Nothing? But at the same you time... You know what else? You know what else? What? Wait a minute. So the red guys. This scene's pretty fucking awesome, though. The, oh, it's an awesome scene. When but they, like, they, they team he up kills to kill Snoke. all the Praetorians. He kills Snoke, and the Praetorians are like, thirty second pose, you guys. Then we'll attack. But <laughs> well, like it's slow motion. I know, but still, they, it's they're a like, slow motion shot. they're like, zoom. It's all happening in like a matter of seconds. Oh my god, you it guys, it's going down. Out. Battle poses ready. <laughs> Shit is real right oh now. Oh my god, I'm going to come at him with the de coup de mal attack. <laughs> what the hell is that? I have no idea. No, 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 it's more like... It's made up. Oh my god, I can't even believe that he killed my boss. I can't even right I now. I can't even with the killing of the boss. Our boss isn't even alive anymore. I am going to take my laser whip and flog <laughs> this bitch <laughs> until she screams murder. Wait. <laughs> what? Screams what? murder? I don't know. Bloody murder or just regular murder? Regular murder. <laughs> There's no blood. It's cauterized. Poison murder? Because of all the lasers. Ah. Uh. But this scene's fucking awesome. Where they're each just taking out the fucking guards. I have a hard time with anyone who says that they weren't like freaking out with excitement during this scene. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, Ren and Ray. Like, oh my God. Right. Raylo kicking yeah, ass. This is, this is where the Raylo thing comes in. Not because you want them to bang, but because you want them to like pull it together. Light and dark unite. Also, for the people claiming Ray is too good with the lightsaber, like she's fairly clumsy with it. Like Ray is just barely keeping up with these guards, and mm -hmm. it's not like she's doing crazy Ray Park Darth Maul moves. Yeah, she's not like flipping around and no, stuff. No, she's doing like very basic, just swinging and just surviving. It's a lot of the stuff that she practiced on the rock too. Right, and here's where she's like. You know what? Let's do this. Let's fucking... Can we save the resistance now, please? Can you save my friends? And he's like, no. Uh, all of it needs to go. Fuck all of it. He's like, Republicans suck. Democrats suck. <laughs> We're going to start a whole new thing. We're going to call it people. And we're just going to like live and we're going to like respect each other and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> there might be frozen yogurt. You know what? People, I think it's taken. <laughs> I think that word is taken. Let's come up with a new word. Smeeple. Let's come up with a new word. Flibibicans. <laughs> no? I think maybe like llamas are cool. Like let's be like llamas. Flabashamalans. <laughs> I like that one. Flabashamalans is the new party. Skliffly it's one party for everybody. It's Everyone's invited to our party. Skiflebians. It's a, it's not just a word, it's a feeling. How about we meet somewhere in the middle? <laughs> Flash a matka up a dig and It's not even, that's not even a word. I couldn't repeat that if that I wanted to. That is not even a word, Kylo. I could not Kylo. repeat that. Yeah, say it again, Kylo. I don't even think it's a thing. <laughs> if you can't repeat it, we can't use it, okay? Fleek at your book and get a put in some buttons. Also, if we're going to stay here, we need to put curtains back up because... This, this, this whole is not a good windowless look. look is not working for me. This windowless look is so 1997. Because when the sun comes up, we're fucked. <laughs> I need sunblock. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my complexion, but it's very fair. They're slowly reaching out their hands. Oh, so he, he reveals to her that he saw who her parents were and she just didn't want to admit it. Her parents were no one. Her they were garbage people. We were a bunch of a couple of drunks who just sold her to Plunker or whatever his name was for drinking money. For drinking money. So when Ryan Johnson was writing this, he was like, "Okay, so Empire Strikes Back had the big reveal of Vader being Luke's father. I'm never going to come up with anything close to that." Well, and like coming out of the Force Awakens, we were like, "Uh, she's, she's Luke's clearly daughter. a Skywalker or yeah. it's a Kenobi or whatever." So he was like, "Okay, what's the most upsetting piece of information that I can reveal here?" And it's that. Her parents She's nobody. were nothing. And they're and never coming back, so by much the way. Better. It is better because, because... Why does she need to be related to a major character that we've already seen? Like, the whole point is the Force is not hereditary. It can be anywhere. It can be but in, Justin, in anyone. But Justin, midichlorians, oh, fucking midichlorians are genetic. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so, so I love this part, too, because... Uh, Ren and Ray are they're like battling for the lightsaber so it's sort of floating between them and they're yep. both sweating their asses off trying to get and it to, to come together and then it splits 
and then Holdo plots a light speed course through every single one of the fucking ships, and it's fucking awesome. So Holdo, so cool. in the end, saves the whole day. So here we are, like, she's a traitor, and this is going to be awful, and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um... Like, the whole point is you are not the product of your past. Your future is what's important. Right. What you do going forward is all that matters. and that's, it's, all, it's all you, kid. And that's way more interesting than, oh, and, we got to do this because Luke was related to Vader, so now ray has got to be related to Luke. And honestly, though, I, love, I, I also like it because it's, it allows her to sever from her past without it constantly haunting her forever. Right. Like, it's sort of like, oh, all right, I guess I can stop worrying about that now. Right. And it opens up the third movie to literally anything. The third movie does not have to be a retread of fucking Return of the Jedi. Or the third movie starts with Finn and Rose's wedding, but Ray runs in. <laughs> and then Finn says, I, Finn, take the Ray, uh, Rose. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Ray runs in and she says, Stop! You can't marry this man! And then they're like, why? Because I want to marry Kylo Ren and we need that priest. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Snoke's just totally fucking dead. <laughs> In case you weren't sure. In case you weren't sure. He's dead. <sighs> Kylo Ren's passed out on the floor. And Ray got Hux. away. So now Kylo and Hux are left in charge. It's like the two sons after the parents are gone. Like, I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. I'm the man of the house. No, I'm the man of the house. And Hux is like, I'm in charge here. I was born first, but I have red hair. <laughs> and Kylo's That's like, my line. Kylo's like, oh, really, Ginger? That's cute. I could fucking crush your trachea with a thought. So I'm in charge. Okay? And right here is where Hux finally reveals he's nothing. Without Snoke there to protect him, he didn't have shit. That's a really cool shot of Leia. Yes, I love this shot. It's a great shot. Yeah. She's sort of behind the, the her little, like, cowl on her It's kind of crazy. Um, like, obviously, when they were shooting this, they didn't know Carrie Fisher wasn't going to live to the next one, and this was going to be her farewell. But, like, so many scenes in this movie are, feel yes. like her goodbye. Yeah, they do. It's crazy. Yeah, this is all that's left of the Resistance. They're fucked. There's 17 people plus Rita's nose. <laughs> which counts as at least another 14, right? <laughs> I was drinking when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> poor Rita. Oh, poor Rita. <laughs> 14 people plus Rita's nose. <laughs> I think Not that... even Rita. Rita's nose. Well, she's one of the people. <laughs> she's one of the 14 people. <laughs> but her nose has to be counted separately, like a carry-on. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. Could you put that under it's the seat? It's a good seat? thing Rita got a plus one to this party. Could you put that underneath the seat all the way? All the way. Thank you. God, I love these koozies. I love these enoughadotcom koozies. You should order them right now. All of you. All of you. All of you. Order them. I feel them. like if I didn't have this koozie, my beer would be lava. I... <laughs> I feel like if I didn't have these koozies, my beer would taste like a wet fart. <laughs> so they send out these rickety little sh shitty salt mining vehicle things. Well, it's electronic battleship time. They have nothing. They have nothing. Most of their ships were destroyed. Oh, these are the shittiest looking <clears throat> vehicles ever created. Also, Finn was like a garbage man stormtrooper. A garbage man. And he learned how to fly pretty easily. Why isn't he a Mary Sue? Yeah, exactly. Marty Stan? Is that what they call it when it's a guy? It's Gary Stew when it's a guy. <laughs> Gary Stew? I'm, I'm shit you not. No, that's a thing? Yep. Wow. It's so stupid. I was making a joke. It's fucking dumb. Where did it come from anyway? It like, came where, from, what's Mary Sue? It came from a piece of Star Trek fan fiction. There was a character named Mary Sue who was like a this new Starfleet officer and she was like good at everything and it was one of the biggest um, parts of that trope is the fact that the author is inserting themselves into this character as like wish fulfillment so that's one thing that's t completely missing from Ray is J.J. Abrams isn't like projecting himself into Ray as a character the colors are very cool in this yes, scene the, the scene is visually gorgeous 
the red and the white and the contrast. It's, it's lovely. It's red and it's white <laughs> and there's color. <laughs> and then they use it in the, in the scene. And then the Millennium Falcon shows up. Ren is like unhinged at this point. Ren hates the Millennium Falcon because it's another reminder that it killed his dad. <gasps> uh, I don't ever want to see that ship again. Oh, I hated that ship. My dad used to take me flying in it. I hated it. I was like, Dad, I just want to play with my iPad. I don't want to play <laughs> flying your stupid ship. Gah. Dad, why can't I just have screen time instead? <laughs> So, they're firing up this battering ram cannon that's like a mini Death Star laser. So, Finn's idea is, I'm going to fly into this son of a bitch and blow it up from the inside. So, it'll stop them. He's like, I'll just be Holdo part two. Yeah, but then Poe realizes this isn't going to fucking help. It's not going to work. This shitty salt mining vehicle is going to melt way before you get to the fucking thing. If you don't get shot down first. And Finn's like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. So then Rose is like, no, you're not. This was another complaint that Rose turns around and stops him. It's like, no, I mean, it makes sense that she stops him because it wasn't going to work. He was going to kill himself. Well, and she clearly loves him. But like, that, not in like a, I want to marry you way, but like she, like, they have a bond. Yeah, I know. I, that part isn't as compelling to me, but just the fact that like, like his ship is melting already. He's not going to make it. So she stops him. Like, I'm fine with that. I'm fine that she stops him from killing himself unnecessarily. You're so stupid, Rose. You're so stupid. Why would you do that? That was a big miss on their part, not yes. putting that in the script. <laughs> You're so stupid, Rose. Um, the scene should have ended here, though. She says this goofy line about, we're going to win by saving what we love. That's a stupid line. She should have just passed out after, I saved you, dummy. And then she goes into a coma. So she'll wake up in a bag of water in the next movie. <laughs> bag of water. Like everywhere. a fish that's been moved from its tank. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh my God. It blocks out the sun. It's not even, you're not even looking at a full profile. She was at 48 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> so. We're so mean to this woman. <laughs> I don't know what her name Honestly, is. Honestly, she's so nice too. Like she's probably a wonderful actress. She probably is. A... I bet you she makes tea whenever her friends come over. <laughs> She makes Never tea ahead once. of time because she can smell them coming <laughs> hours before they get there. Never once have her friends shown up and not had tea. Never once have her friends shown up unexpectedly. She's like, oh, they're on their way. I'll put the tea on. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not busy next week. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so. So Luke shows up. He got a haircut on the Luke way. Luke shows up having just for mend and gotten a haircut. <laughs> I guess the hippo whale fish people... <laughs> Cut his hair for him. They were like, you can't go anywhere looking like so, that. So. You're a mess. Look at you. He should have just shown up as his old 60-year-old self for this scene. So it wouldn't have been so telegraphed that it wasn't really him. It, But to me, it wasn't telegraphed that it wasn't really him. No, I knew something was off. You knew something was off, but I was the one that told you that I picked up on it earlier than you did. Did you? Yes. It's the moment when... He's standing outside and he's about to sort of take on Kylo Ren and his blazers or whatever. Yeah. And he shifts his foot slightly. And the oh, red doesn't the, show the up doesn't underneath show his up, right. foot. And so when that happened, I was like, oh. I knew something I was wrong, though, there. when he ignites his blue lightsaber. Why like, did you? Why? Because the blue lightsaber was destroyed. He didn't <clears throat> have possession of it. Ray and Kylo broke the blue lightsaber. It was the only blue lightsaber in existence? It was his original blue lightsaber. His Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi on was the green one that he made. Mm. He should have just shown up here with the green lightsaber. I don't know why they chose to have him project himself with the old one. Like that was telegraphing. So he should have shown up just looking old and with the green lightsaber and it would have, the scene would have worked better. That said, it's still a very cool scene. It's still a very cool scene. And... For as much as people complain, why didn't Luke just show up in person? Number one, his ship was fucking submerged underwater for a couple decades. So and number probably two, didn't fly. he and would have been gone in 30 seconds. Well, yeah, there's that. But also, this was the most Jedi thing he could have done was show up and not strike a single blow. Yes. Because once again, if you actually watch The Empire Strikes Back, Yoda spells it all out. He's like, a Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. We are luminous beings not this crude matter so basically not he's... about having a fucking sword fight yoda and miyagi really should have gone out for a beer yeah. <laughs> would have been a language <clears throat> barrier but yes 
I like this moment here where Ren is complete, like unhinged isn't even like the word for yeah. it here. He's losing his mind and Hux has to try to rein him in. Yep. And it's a really interesting dynamic between the two of them because a lot of other times in these different Rita, scenes could that you have move? Happened, I can't see Poe. Hux, <laughs> Hux is losing his <laughs> shit. And Hux is like, dude, I think you got him. That's like, you know, when someone burns down the house trying to kill a spider. <laughs> which, you know, let's be honest, could be me someday. That's true. And then Luke is fine. So Luke steps out of the red smoke. And he brushes off like his a shoulder. Fucking badass. He's like, yeah, Ben, that was adorable. Why don't you use the big boy voice now? And Ren is like a mess. He's just so mad. <laughs> and, you know, Hux is like... Throws him aside. Yeah, Hux is like, let me try to talk some sense. Oh, forget it. Supreme leader. Maybe that's... Oh, fuck. <laughs> so Kylo is like, I'm going to fucking stab you through the face, old man, older man. And Luke's like, no, you ain't. You ain't going to hit shit. He's acting like such a toddler right now. Yep. Ray moves the rocks to get them out. Oh, hello, Mary Sue. No, oh, she moved more rocks than Luke did. Yoda. Oh, she's Mary Sue. Except that she had a reason to move the rocks. <sighs> that wasn't just Yoda telling her to move a rock. Right. Finn's like, I love you, Ray. But now I'm with Rose, and now I'm confused. What am I supposed to do? There's a lot of stuff happening here now. I don't even know. Oh, Luke got him there. Burn! Strike me down and I'll always be with you just like your father. Luke is on his little rock the whole time. It's all just a projection. Shaking and sweating. Kylo's like, motherfucker. I really like Kylo's outfit. Yes. <laughs> I know that's a very girly thing to say, but so his clothes cool. are cool. Yeah. And then Luke, Luke falls the, away. The, the effort was so great that it ended up killing him. But he sacrificed himself to allow the resistance to escape again. Basically the most Jedi thing he could have done. Yeah. He's so Jedi right now, I can't even. I can't even with how Jedi he is. The last time I saw something, that Jedi was five minutes ago when the other Jedi thing happened. Now Kylo's like, I'm fucking burn this place down, fucking kill everybody, kill him. And they're all about the, uh, the black, white, and red, the mm. bad guys. There's a lot of black, white, and red in this movie in general. Yeah. That seems to be the palette. I'm sorry. Would you like to say that again? It seems to be the palette. The flames. You be the nose. And they can see each other. They have one last force Skype with each other. And Ray's like, what the fuck? There's like 10 of us left plus Rita's nose. What are we going to do? These so little now, kids are so So cute. now these kids are talking. It's like, it's little Finn, Poe, and Ray. Yeah. So they're talking about how Luke saved the day. Well, they're kind of playing Star Wars, sort of. Well, yeah, but like word of Luke's heroic final act have gotten out across the galaxy to the resistance allies so the kids are now like playing this out this kid's terrible at sweeping by the way he barely touches the hay yeah well this here's a run out the clock situation <laughs> so luke has in fact become the spark of hope that the galaxy needed and that was the payoff for the whole rich planet thing because right, the, the kids... little kid gets the ring and he's the future and he's got force power because he grabs the broom by going Zhoo! So, oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah. So, is The Last Jedi a masterpiece? No. Is it a good Star Wars movie? Yes. Is Rita's nose ginormous? <laughs> C. <laughs> the Last Jedi is Rita's nose. <laughs> it's got some force, if you know what I mean. It can pull all kinds of it's white powder to it. Gra whoa. Gravitational force. <laughs> Poor Rita. Poor Rita. What's her real name? Do we know her name? Rita Cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's a... No, oh, that wasn't what? good. Hold on. If this was an improv class, I'd be dinging the triangle right now. <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm letting you know that I'm doing Are this. Are you looking up Rita? Yes. And do you know how I have Googled her? Lady with the big nose in Last Jedi. <laughs> Let's see what happens when I click go. Oh my God. If there's even one entry, the world is way too mean a place. The top result is... The Lady Rebel Officer with the Unbelievably Large Nose. <laughs> Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Moviechat.org. What's her name? <laughs> it's just a blog chat thing. And somebody posted the Lady Rebel Officer with the Unbelievably Large Nose. Who's the actress? I know I've seen her before. And the first response was Nosey O'Donnell. <laughs> I'm sad we didn't come up with it. 
Yeah. Oh, Amanda Lawrence? So, you know, here's the deal. Justin is a Star Wars nerd. I am a Star Wars nerd by proxy. We both feel this movie's pretty good. We don't like the internet trolls who are just big babies about it. <laughs> I think it's very good. Mm. I think it's more than pretty good. The trolls bother me mostly because all I see from them is girls. The problem is girls. Yeah. It's just the inanity of that argument undermines the valid criticisms that there are of the movie. Then there are some valid Yeah, that's true. Issues yeah. with it. But like it all gets lost when you're just like, oh, Ray is too perfect a character and the women are never wrong. Ray and Rose and Roldo and men. Men are portrayed respectfully enough to men and why this wasn't movie there hates a, men. Why wasn't there a male character with a giant nose? And Ruin Johnson ruined my childhood. Ruin Johnson ruined That's what your they're, childhood? They're calling him Ruin Johnson. His name's oh, Ryan Johnson. come on. They're calling him Ruin Johnson. Oh, my yeah. God. When people say you ruined my childhood, that to me is like, Hy okay. It's hyperbolic. No one retroactively ruined anything for you, It's hyperbolic sir. nonsense, you fucking babies. And, you know, when they're saying simple-minded shit like Ray should have lost a hand or something or... This movie isn't as good because there aren't enough lightsaber duels. Like, is that all that Star Wars is to you? Is people fucking swinging swords at each other? Is your Are your tastes that simple? So yeah, The Last Jedi is a pretty damn good movie. It's not perfect. It's not the best Star Wars movie. But it's in the top half. The Last Jedi is the fourth best Star Wars movie. Yeah, I think I like The Force Awakens slightly better than this. Yes. Thanks for listening. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Uh, Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit us at enougha.com where you can buy official merch. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+.